<laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. It's the Elite Pro Wrestling Alliance podcast, the Elite Pro podcast. I am Tate Griffin, joined by Jake the Machine Davis and Leslie Leatherman. Ow! <laughs> That's the highwayman, Leslie Leatherman, <laughs> in d- Drumbeat Johnson Davis. Over there. <laughs> That's really run its course. <laughs> I remember you saying that last week that it ran its course. I was just trying to get by it. Yeah, so. You know me, I'm, I'm old ten course. As <laughs> far <laughs> <laughs> like a cat with nine lives, baby. Had a splash flashback. <laughs> <laughs> Something works for me. I stick with it. You were talking to you were talking to a man who ordered a burger and then ordered ordered slider burgers as an appetizer. <laughs> I ordered, I, ordered I, was little there, it happened. I ordered little burgers while I was waiting for my big burger. <laughs> <laughs> they were delicious. <laughs> That's how I get in shape, Raditz. <laughs> Where was this at? Oh, I, believe was, I believe it was either Applebee's or Ruby Tuesdays. I can't remember which one. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it was Applebee's. I think, I think we are at the bar area. Well, I'll tell you what. Happened. Applebee's is hit and miss, but the Applebee's up there... Their wings are miss. They're miss all the time. Well, I, think, I think they're the shittiest wings in town. Well, I, I will say this: we've we've um, been up. We used to go up there to watch UFC fights, and um, we've had some. We get one of those tall tables, and man, we've we had some fucking some good great times. times. We yeah. had some good times up there. Vega went up there a couple of times. Closed it down a few um, times. Um, we went up there with Riggs, Riggs. Riggs went up there with us. Uh, it was a it was a fun, just a fun time. Of course, the, the wives were with us. I mean, we had. Uh, Great time, of course. Fuck, I mean, all Jake and I need is a, a fucking beer and a place to sit down. That's why there's so much laughing here. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, really, I mean, all we need is a beer in the ground. I mean, think about it, you know, because I'll, I'll sit on the fucking ground. You know? You know, I don't mind. So, anyway. So last week after the podcast, I didn't get to to tell you guys this story. This is a true story. Um, Tim Walker, who uh, was here last week, was a fantastic guest. I think one of our one of our best guests and a great guy. Um, Everybody took off and everything, and I was waiting for my wife to pick me up because I'd had a few soda pops, and you know I don't drink and drive. Kids, listen to me. Don't do that. Always have a designated driver. So I'm sitting out front on a beautiful beautiful day, and here comes this lady walking with a. 30 pack of Milwaukee's best. <laughs> from, from the bike. So she's no, no, walking from this way towards bike. So I'm sitting there. I'm, there, I'm, sitting, there, I'm yeah. sitting there on the bench. Now, this is an opened 30 pack of Milwaukee's best, and cans are falling out like rolling down the street. And like she she gave that gave up wave to one of them. Like, <laughs> you're, too, gave up wave. you're too fast, can. I'm not going to get you. And so I'm just kind of looking at my gave up wave. Just kind of looking at my phone, typing in anything because you know <laughs> anybody knows me knows that the digits. I'm not really typing. I'm just kind of you know. So she walks up to kids. Excuse me, sir. You look like a nice guy. And I'm like, really? You tried to give her the Terry the Bear at the yeah. gas station, and she is. She is. Could you call me a cab? And he hit me again. And I'm like, yes, ma'am, I will. <laughs> so. So Did the question who's Eddie? Come no, she goes Eddie. You know, and she's telling me, she's explaining to me who Eddie is, and I was like, "You had me at Eddie hit you." You know, let me. Just. <laughs> so it's like, what's the cab number? So I, she gives me the number, and I call, and I went, "Yeah, there's a lady that needs a, a cab here over by Blanket Chips." The guy goes, "Ask her if she just called me." I went, <laughs> I went "Ma'am, did you just call the cab?" She goes, "Yes, I did." I went, "Yes, she did." He goes. To ruin our way. I told her that we were coming. <laughs> what are you getting yelled said, at? I said, apparently the cab is on its way, ma'am. Well, thank you, honey. It's like, no problem. Guy gets changed. I'm like, yeah, no. no. <laughs> kind of hung up, and I just kind of sat there and watched her walk away with this. Probably, I'm assuming there was 11 beers left. <laughs> just, I'm, I'm, I'm being a man who's handled a 30-pack or two in his day, and by the leverage, and <laughs> take it into account of her drunkenness and... <laughs> There was eleven left and one rolling down Wallingford going Wallingford, you know, West Virginia. So, oh my the God. point is, How did I the not point get an is, immediate call about well, I, this tried, story? I called, I called him, and his phone like conked out on me. Remember, I yeah, called yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. trying to, I'm trying to tell you the the, the story of what well, happened, and you know, well, well, um, so from now on, let's let's not leave no man behind from now on. Because <laughs> if fucking Eddie came, shit could have got real. <laughs> 
know what the fuck would have happened. Oh my god! When fucking Eddie shows up. Yeah. You know, Le- <laughs> Leatherman is cool. First of all, we were like, you know, and I wanted to go get that beer so bad. You know, the, there was a part of me that was like, and I was like, nah, I'm just gonna let it go. <laughs> sometimes you're gonna, Maybe, sometimes you're you gonna let those tough to reach beers go. <laughs> you threw the game up wave too. <laughs> well, I just kind of looked at it. I was like, if you were a Keystone, my friend, Daddy be coming. <laughs> Back anyway, yes. well, anyway so, so that's what had the podcast. I mean, you know, life continues, folks, after the, the pause button is hit and the stop button. <laughs> you know, the music hits, and you guys just got to sit around and wait. I right, camera ought to fucking follow me around. I've had some of the crazy the old guy at the fucking ATM. Remember, I told you, the old oh, guy at the fucking tell that ATM? story, it's great. All right, this is Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to wrestling, folks. We'll get to wrestling. This is good shit, though. It's Christmas time, and I was going to buy my co-workers some donuts for, for, for Christmas at the bakery. So I went yeah, to... Yeah, his co-workers. I, I was going to give... Air me, quotes. There was going to be plenty for yeah. everyone. <laughs> fuck, fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> fuck, I'm not telling him. No, I'll tell him. Anyway, so... so the bank wasn't open yet because it was like 10 till 8, but the bakery's open early. But the bank had one of those, um, the front door <laughs> where the ATM was at was open. So you could go in there. You basically had to swipe your card. A little vestibule. Yeah, like a little vestibule thing or whatever. Nice word machine. Look at you. And uh, so anyway, so I go in there and there's some guy that's, or an old man that's sitting there kind of in front of it. And he's standing in front of it. And he's kind of got, you can't see me folks, but he, he's kind of got the sways and stuff like that. And he keeps looking back at me and he's got his card in he's pushing numbers and you know it just keeps spitting his card back out spitting out receipts and you know he can't get any money and finally he turns around looks at me he goes would you back the fuck up <laughs> and I went <laughs> said, excuse me sir he goes would you get the fuck back, back the fuck up right now and I'm, I'm almost back as far as I can fucking get and I went is something bothering you <laughs> Because I'm really far back here. I just want to get some money and get to work and everything. He goes, I want to get out of time, but when I'm in here, you know, you don't get that close to me when I'm in here. I was like, look, you obviously don't have any money. It keeps <laughs> spitting it out. You're very drunk. I don't know if you're drunk. I don't know if it's last night's drunk or if it's today's drunk, but you're still in that moment. You know, could you just... Can I just fucking get my money and leave? And, and so he kind of like, scrap, motherfucker, scrap, yeah. stuff like that. And he opens up the door, he kicks it open, he looks at me, he's like, poof, like that. I went, hey, Merry Christmas. He goes, fuck you. <laughs> Just, uh, singing jingle with death. Yes, you need to have a camera following you around. Shit happens all the time. <laughs> Listen here, motherfucker. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> Classic. Tell you what, donuts are fucking awesome, though. <laughs> All right. Well, we're uh, the po- about these podcast beers are brought to you by <laughs> Dalton Hayes, <laughs> worst <laughs> drinker ever. Went to the Brantley Gilbert concert last weekend. He bought an eighteen pack, and there was like fourteen of them left in the cooler, and that was it. <laughs> we got well, we got several cases of beer, but he got an 18-pack of Coors Light in particular. And Why the fuck would you only get 18 beers? Well, there was 14 of them left whenever we got home. <laughs> he fucking drinks like he wrestles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it's bad when you get out drank by Tess Valentine. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> at, what, at, what, at what point did Tess get weird? Was she doing just beer or did, was she doing liquor? <laughs> That no, was just beer. It was oh, just yeah. a good. It, it was. It was a fun outing. Right. Liquor, liquor testing. Outdoor concerts are the best. <laughs> By the way, it was a very se- September thirtieth. Yep. Hit it um, up. Josh you know the stats. Star. I know it. Uh, uh, he, your brother looked at me like what's Colter going Wall, on? Josh Morningstar, uh, Shooter Jennings, Shooter Jennings, Headliner. Leslie Leatherman. Take Machine Davis, I believe Bodie Williams will be uh, where's the coming. This is going to be in um, Boonsboro, Boonsboro, right outside of Hagerstown. Uh, Josh has got that uh, morning radio, uh, that morning show that he does on Facebook. It's Coffee like that and vibe. cigarettes. He changed the name of it to Good Morning. I'm not sure why. Probably, I don't know, but he just hmm. changed it like a couple of days ago. But Creative um, license. I don't know. But I was I was listening to it. Uh, I was listening to it the other so day. So now it's called Good Morning? It's just called Good Morning. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know why, but hey, you know. And you know what? He does wear um, his good brother shirt. He's I think that's his that's his gimmick he's wearing that, but um, he can see who was in there and he goes, Oh my good buddy Leslie Leatherman's in here. This one's for you. 
it hit, hit a little highwayman. So it was it was pretty badass. Uh, it's cool. Speaking, speaking of the highwayman, speaking of the highwayman, somebody sent me today on this afternoon. I was in the car and, and I hear a uh, thing on my phone, and then I look it up and uh, Luke Gallows. Uh, what is it? Superstar Inc. Superstar Inc. Yeah, Jacob, Jacob Knott sent it to me. Yeah. Jacob Young. Yeah. The uh, can't remember offhand who who it was that sent it to me. I was driving, so I wasn't trying to look at my phone too much. But uh, of yeah. course, then I, I immediately clicked on it, and then I I uh, played it through the stereo. <laughs> but uh, you're looking you know, at the awesome. fucker. Never mind. Go ahead. It was awesome. Uh, you know, it, it it obviously it was built around him his, his tattoo shop, uh, painted gypsy tattoo, yeah. in, in uh, Conyers, Georgia. I suggest anybody go there. My wife recently got a tattoo there. It was amazing, freehand drawn and one of a kind. I, I would suggest anybody that's going to get. Ink, it's worth the trip. It, whether it's, you're flying it was, or driving, it was a very cool place, man. It was it was super awesome. I was, but, uh, it was great. But on top of that, I mean, he, he uh, the tattoo that he actually got was the the core four tattoo with uh, Bad Luck Fale, Tama Tama Tonga, uh, Carl and, and and Luke, and uh, you know to represent them. It wasn't of them, <laughs> right. but uh, it was. It, it's a badass tattoo. We we saw it when we were down there, and. Uh, but uh, he also mentioned about the Highland tattoo that we yeah. have, that you and I and he has, and uh, and they showed it, and then they had a picture, an old school picture of us back in the day from the second Lord of the Rings that you won. I did, yep. With the trophy and everything. Yep. <laughs> I did. Yep. But yeah, it, it, it's an awesome episode. Jump on the network and check yeah, it out. Yeah, it's if you it's, it's cool because Corey Graves. Uh, I knew Corey in a different life whenever he was wrestling as Sterling James Keenan in uh, Pittsburgh. And uh, did a lot of work over in Far North Wrestling and, and worked with him quite a bit. And actually spent some time with his younger brother, Sam, is uh, wrestling in Mexico, a huge star in Mexico, too. So the uh, real, really good people. The Superstars, Inc. is incredible. I really love listening to... Uh, they did another episode not long ago from the Gypsy yeah, Tattoo with Gold, with Dust. Gold Dust. And he was getting a tattoo to honor his father, the American Dream. And uh, But they talk about... They talk about some of the tattoos that they have and what they mean to them and why they got them and this, that, and the other. And I thought it was like you was very cool that with all the work that that uh, Gallows has, has done that he you know picked that particular tattoo to as something that was special to him and um, basically he told the story of you know it was when he was first I believe he was still doing the Festus run and he came home to to Maryland and. Uh, it was a Christmas present for the three of us. Uh, you know, you got us. Uh, we all got matching brother awesome. brother tattoos, as he called bro tattoos. Tattoo. Yeah, so. It was good stuff. So check it out if you're on the network. And uh, sweet, yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it was pretty cool. So Luke Gallows and Josh Morning started giving me shout outs. You know, uh, Eddie's girl. You know, <laughs> so, you know as you to call a cab, it's all coming you know, up. Leather. Um, you know, other than <laughs> Kid got your shout out yeah, instead you know. of out. <laughs> Other than pissing off a dispatch guy, I've had a pretty good week. (laughs) (laughs) All right, well, we have our show coming up August the twenty fifth, and there's been uh, there's been a change. Um, You know, I think it's a lame saying to always say, "Due to circumstances beyond our control." These were circumstances not only beyond our control, but despite every single thing we could possibly do to keep them within our control. And we're going to get into that more in a very public way later. But for the time being, we just want to say that uh, Ultimo Dragon is unable to um, get into the United, fly into the United States for our show on August the 25th. He's going to be doing an extensive tour in Japan, and he's uh, unable to make it. It's something we just found out recently, and uh, so we had to we had to go with a, a replacement for the show. And I think I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah, first I think we should say that really none of this falls on Ultimo. Absolutely I, I not. Should, no. I think we should definitely say that, and um, you know. I'm a big believer that you know great things come back around sometimes, and uh, sure, absolutely. You know, so um, all of us, he's one of the greatest international stars of all time. He's a huge, uh, you know, held more championships than, than most of us have had years on this earth. So he, it was an amazing thing. But I got to be honest, um, it's that that whole thing when when a door gets shut, a window gets opened, or mm-hmm. whatever. One door opens, another one closes. For what is, whatever the saying is, spaghetti and meatballs, spaghetti brother. Meatball. At the end of the day, this is not a disappointing thing because we have got we have got former. Well, you know you know the list better than I do. He's I mean, a, the accolades: a TNA World Heavyweight Champion, TNA X Division Champion, multiple time TNA Tag Team Champion with multiple 
uh, uh, partners. We have got the monster abyss coming in, and he has agreed to do his signature monster ball extreme rules anything ghost match. I yeah, I, have, I, I, I had the conversation with him yesterday on the phone. I said, you know, we have you uh, stepping up against Anthony Adam, who's been as of yet unstoppable at Elite Pro. I mean, he's just he's, he's definitely he's definitely got some momentum going. <laughs> he really does. For sure. And um, I said, you know, that he's one of the most hated guys on the roster. Because Jason so, Raddatz is the unstoppable. Jason right, he sure. But I mean, literally, I mean, he's gone through everybody. Nobody stopped him. He's gone through everybody. And um, I said, you know, that this guy is one of the most hated guys on the roster. And uh, we're thinking that, you know, this is a, a true test for him. And that's when Abyss said, you know, if it's a real test, then make it a Monsters Ball hardcore match. And uh, that's we said, uh, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, one half of our main event, our double main event, is Abyss one-on-one with Anthony Adam. But a monsters ball match. As great as that is going to be, and it's going to be amazing. And I think Anthony Anthony Adam is just on the the cusp of being one of the top guys, not just at Elite Pro, but anywhere. I mean, there are certain guys after being in this business for a long, long time, as I have been. Tim Walker said it last week. You know, Doc, you know, you know Gallows. He he saw him, and. Um, I don't know, there's just something special about Anthony Aiden when I see him, and I, I just think, man, he's got all the potential in the world, so this will be his biggest match. But, man, our heavyweight championship match is off the charts. Absolutely. Do you want to fill them in? How we've about you, Machinery? Do you want to uh, do you want to do that? Go ahead, go ahead. I'll chime in whenever we've, I'm We've got Mr. Excellence, Brandon Scott, fresh off of capturing the Elite Pro Wrestling Alliance Heavyweight Championship. And what a match it was, too. I mean, yeah. These guys went nearly a half hour, and it was just it was amazing. hot, heavy, you know, step for step. And kudos to Bodie Williams, who, you know, Brandon Scott's notorious for having those types of matches where he brings the absolute best out in himself on purpose and his opponents as yeah. a necessity. And, and that exact thing happened, but Bodie did not take a back step and went toe-to-toe with, with Brandon right up until the yeah. final bell. I mean, you, you uh, couldn't have asked more of either one of those two guys for that matchup and, there. And he may not say this, and I, I don't want to I, – I had an opportunity. Um, you know, Flex and I uh, spent some time with Bodie after the show, and um, he was he was hurt early in that match. Yeah. Took a shot to the sternum. And yeah. Had, uh, yeah. You know, and he still um, – and, you know, Kudos to Brandon first and foremost to become the champion. Kudos to Brandon for beating a uh, 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 Bodie Williams at sixty percent is still better than most guys. And believe me, I've had my ass whipped by Bodie enough to know that he's as real deal as there is. So for Brandon Scott, yeah, the sky's the limit for him as well too. But I, I agree with you. Kudos to Bodie. I think he was an excellent champion. I think that the best thing that a champion can do is make the belt me more. I agree. And, and, and I would like to selfishly say I was a better champion than Bodie, but I know that's not true. I know that he could go in there with uh, an opponent like Brandon or an opponent like Sal Sincere or anybody that you put him in there and steal the show every night. And um, he was an excellent champion. And now we have maybe the, the best champion we've had. I don't know. I, I, I don't mean, know either. And, 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 and you know what? But I'm and, talking about credential-wise. I'm talking about skill-wise. Well, and, I mean, and I want to say real quick, I mean, I don't think Bodie Williams is out of the shuffle either. I mean, well, he's not, but he's not. But, I mean, we have we have a guy We have a guy that truthfully could be plucked by WWE any second in Brandon Scott. Absolutely. Anytime WWE is within, um, you know, uh, uh, any, I mean, he's, he's constantly being used on their television more than probably anybody – that's a regular on our elite roster. I think that's yeah. that's fair to say. Sure. And I would say that he, um, next to Casey Carlisle, probably branches out more than anybody else. Is in more demand. Is holding holding titles in different areas and doing things. And yeah, you know, that's one of the things I love about us guys and and Lee. We don't just talk about our product and nothing else. I mean, there's obviously a big world of wrestling out there. Sure. And Brandon Scott is. Over that world, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, whether it's whether it's uh, House of Pain or NWL or WXW or MCW, MCW or yeah. VCW or you put a W at the end of it. If Brandon Scott's there, he is in the thick of things, and he is amazing. I mean, hell, he just won the Dick Karakoff Tag Team Tournament. You yeah. know, I mean, um, with uh, with Gustin Uberstud, and I mean, you know, he's he's just an amazing competitor, and um, he and Bodie. They had 
they had a daunting task ahead of them because they had already had one of the best matches of the year. Yeah. But I, I think they topped it. I, I think, think they, they. Oh, I think, I think they did I think too. It was, I think it was amazing. So. And. But his opponent. Yeah. Now, now as great as that was, Brandon Scott. You know, there's no rest for the weary here. He's stepping in, you know, with the very next show, and he's defending that belt against the current rating X Division champion in TNA, Sanjay Dutt. I don't even know what to say about that. Well, simply put, Sanjay Dutt is the, probably the best athlete that's ever stepped in an elite pro rank. When, when you know, I think, uh, <laughs> Jake Davis just pointed to himself, just so you know. But uh, I, I think that I, I think that, that that's I mean. That is, there may be an argument for it, but I mean, I agree with you. <laughs> I just think uh, Sanjay. I've, I've had the pleasure. Of, have you worked in Jake? Have you wrestled Sanjay? No, no, never, um, never wrestled. He's Sanjay. the smoothest guy. Yeah, I mean, but it, it's, just, it's one of those things where when you know we, we we put over Brandon Scott on this thing all the time, and and, and that's whether, hard for me to do. Whether it's re- whether it's recording or we're just sitting around bullshit about wrestling, we talk about how good Brandon Scott is and how he makes everybody good. Sanjay's that very same way because he doesn't wrestle anybody that he doesn't make better. Yeah. And that's because most people aren't better than him. And I'm going to be curious to see because these guys are neck and neck now. Sanjay, you know, extensive work, you know, overseas and TNA and all these other things. Brandon Scott, you know, especially in recent years, has really upped his game and escalated his credentials. Yeah. So, I mean, you're looking at two guys that are still soaring on the rise. I mean, and, and very similar in size, very similar in speed. You know, the technique is off the charts for both of these guys. I mean, it, it really is a pick when you look yeah. at it. And the thing I like about it, too, and pick is a great way of, of saying it, um, you know, when somebody comes in and you're wrestling for the championship, the champion always has that championship advantage of he's got to be pinned or he's got to do a submission. You know, um, and just the nerves that somebody normally has whenever they're stepping up for that big gold belt, whether it's the Elite Pro gold belt or whatever. And I think that the champion has a crazy advantage in that way, too, because you're the champion. You you know, Sanjay's not going to have any of that. Sanjay's right. not going to have any of those. Let's say he's not going to have any butterflies. He probably has butterflies before every match. I know I do. But at the same time, it's not going to be a stage that he's not been at before or performed at before. Yeah. And I do believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that that heavyweight championship is the only elite title that has eluded Sanjay Dutt. And that includes the Grand, uh, the Grand Prix he's been tournament. A, yeah. He's been a tag champion. He's been a cruiserweight champion. He's been the Grand Prix tournament champion. So don't think he doesn't want to add that, sure. that trophy to his championship. And if he does... I mean, at that point, I mean, you know, you would have to say that he's the most decorated elite pro wrestler of I mean, all time. Tied and, with Robbie Page. And, yeah. you know, Robbie Page is the only other guy that's, that's managed to accomplish those four feats. And and no disrespect to Robbie, though, but, I mean, when you look at everything else that Sanjay's done. Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, so, but, I mean, I, I think truthfully... Well, and, uh, and also when you look at, you know, Sanjay has wrestled extensively with elite pro for years now. Right. He yeah. is actually the last time he showed up um, at Elite Pro, uh, he had wrestled for his 20th his 20th appearance with Elite. That's amazing. I mean, that's very much a regular roster guy. Oh, I agree. But, I think, yeah. but now when you when you look at that and you, and you look at like you, you you know, we all mentioned about Robbie having those accolades. I mean, you know, Robbie's been a staple. I mean, he's always sure. been there. You're looking at probably about half of the amount of matches or appearances for Elite Pro that Sanjay's had, and he's on the cusp of reaching the same right. milestone. You're, that right. shows you just he, how yeah, high of a level the, He hasn't Sanjay had the number is. of opportunities yeah, to, exactly. to, grab, to grab those brass rings that he has. Right. And that's the thing. Sanjay doesn't waste those opportunities. Sure. You know, when he gets the opportunity, he makes the most of it, as does Brandon Scott, which is why it's a pick him, as Jake the Machine yeah. Davis said, which is why it's a great match. It's going to be amazing. Him. And I mean, I've, I've said it before, but, but that is a match where everybody, including myself, is going to be at a curtain or a corner somewhere or a yeah. upper rafter or... Or whatever, so they can see that ring. You know, it's not one of those things where, hey, I might take a look at the monitor backstage. People are going to want to watch that live, real time. And, and I, I just think, you know, the whole you never know what's going to happen next. You know, yeah. Elite Pro, you never know what's going to happen next. And I hope you guys don't mind me sharing this, but right before we went on to this podcast, we got a phone call from Tim Walker, who was here last week, and as we talked extensively, Tim has seen as much wrestling as anybody, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And he just was very complimentary of Elite Pro for the um, the changes that had to be made 
and coming up with this lineup. Mm-hmm. And to, to be able to introduce Abyss to our audience for the first time in a Monsters Ball match against Anthony Adam, a guy who I think is just scratching the surface of what he's going to be, and then the current TNA X Division champion, Sanjay Dutt, taking on Brandon Scott, who if you don't think he's WWE bound, then you just aren't on the same planet as the rest of us defending the Elite Pro Championship for the very first time. Those two matches alone are fantastic. Yeah. And that's, that's enough to bring people in. So I'm very excited about the, this show. Um, it's, it's disappointing, but I don't think that there's a drop in the caliber of the show. If anything, I think that the fact that um, you know, you're able to, to put those two matches out there and their co-main events, it's fantastic. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. Uh, we also have um, booked for this uh, the intergender tag match, which I'm trying to remember the last time we had an intergender tag match. There's only match. been one that I know of. It was, it, was, uh, it was Casey Carlisle and Vince Vega against Robbie Pace and Tess Valentine. That was three years ago, maybe? And didn't we have, though, didn't we have a six-man where um, it was Tess with uh, High Tide Bodie Williams and uh, uh, Sean Hudson? When they were tag team champions, I believe. I think it was a six-man intergender. And I think it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was Vince Vega. Either um, Riggs, Scott Titus, Scott and, Titus uh, or and Casey. Casey yeah. With uh, the Jason Justice on the floor. It was the pride. The pride. Yeah. 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 I believe that's what it was at Potomac State College. Yeah. This one, I think. probably 2011. And I think this one, first of all, there's a lot more animosity. There's a lot more personal things going on yeah. in this. And, uh I am. I think. I think it's the most anticipated one for sure. We have uh, the Highwayman himself, Leslie Leatherman. Yep. Teaming up with Tess Valentine, step in the ring against Danny Deville and Jason Raddatz. Yeah, you know, um, Jason Raddatz. I, I, I'm kind of at my wits' end with compliment Jason Raddatz. I'm just starting to get pissed off. I mean, I'm really starting to get pissed off. You know, every time I turn around. You know, it's not. I, I don't mind a guy that wants to try to make a stepping stone out of you to get to the next level, but this guy, he just. Um, he's good. He's tough. He's talented. But um, he's kind of an asshole. And uh, I'm sick of every time I turn around being laying in my own sweat and blood and tears because he's kicked my ass. And for the and, record. Just a couple weeks ago, I mean, you and Flex Phenom were victorious over Robbie Page and, and Jason Raddatz in Mount Storm at the Union Educational Complex, and uh, and yet you still found yourself laying in a heap. Yeah, you know, he's he has kind of taken it beyond just, you know, let me get a good win over the former champion to set myself up for a title match. Hell, I signed my title match over to him to, to get into a match with him, but for some reason... He doesn't want to just compete. He wants to try to hurt and maim and just, you know, destroy everything that I've spent 20 years working toward. And I don't have any kids. I don't have any legacy other than being Leslie Leatherman and what I've done in that ring and what people, when people other than my friends will look at me there's going to be people that bought a ticket to a show that are going to be like, you know, some of the stuff that that guy did was pretty cool. That's what I hope. That's that's my legacy. That's what I'm going to leave on on this earth. And for some reason, this guy wants to not only just try to get a win to catapult himself. I'm all about that. I get that. It's a wrestling business. But he wants to try to just shit all over everything I've done and just try to you know, beat me down and just, I don't, I don't know why, I, I don't understand that kind of mentality. It's kind of like when somebody makes a new building and they put up this new building and then the next day somebody had to go out there and spray graffiti all over it. I've never understood that. You know, there's something great there for the world to see. I'm not saying that everything that I did was great, but whether they like me or they don't like me, the folks in that locker room have always pretty much respected me. And um, he's not showed me an ounce of respect and I'm done showing it to him. And this is this is starting to get it's starting to cut me personally deep. And I think that Tess feels a lot of the same way. I think she feels betrayed by Danny. I think she feels like um, you know, she was the champion, and that Danny took that away from her, and um, not took it away from her because she was able to defeat her, but took it away from her by stabbing her in the back. Mm-hmm. And um, Tess is not my best friend. I'm not her best friend. 
but you can bet we're going to have a common goal and we're going to have a challenge ahead of us, but I'm, I'm going for it. So. Awesome. Another match that we have, uh, have signed here is a triple threat tag team championship match. Um, we have uh, myself teaming up with a young Reggie Collins and uh, the exiled uh, Dalton Hayes and Shane Malice. You know, their team, which is new, and our team, which is fairly new, we have something in common. We have both been able to get a victory over the Goodfellows, although it's been, you know, it hasn't been a pin or a submission. We haven't gotten a hold of the belts. Championship advantage. Yeah. Right, right. So uh, the match has been signed where it's a triple threat, so both of us are going to be getting a shot uh, simultaneously at the uh, the titles. And I'm curious because I haven't gotten uh, uh, I haven't gotten the breakdown of, of what type of match this is. If one that's what I was going to say. Is it, is it, is it a match is it a or a triple threat match? Yeah. You know, is there going to be a team? You know, is everybody going to be on the apron? And there's going to be three guys in. Is there going to be two guys in, and it's all tag, or is everybody tornado style going like, at if it? If Dalton Hayes pins me, are they the champions? Yeah, I, that's the way I understand it. But I'm not. That's my I, understanding I, of it too. And I. I I, but I don't know if it's a triangle match or a triple threat because the triangle match, all all three teams are going to be going at it at once, and almost like a six person brawl. But well, then there's also the, the actually the triple threat, which is going to have. I think it's on the Texas apron. Tornado rules. A triangle match would actually have only two members in at a time with somebody on the apron, wouldn't it? Or would it be one partner in each in each ring? At I all think that would be tr- true true triple threat rules. Okay. I don't, I'll have to look it up. I'm not yeah, sure. We'll when to, I think about the, the we'll triangle match, that, the triangle match that the Flair and of course this is tag, but Flair and Sting and Luger had at Starcade, one guy had to be out of the ring, and somebody had to tag that guy in, and two guys went at it at once. But it was still the first fall. But um, but that's mm-hmm. I don't know if a single yeah, triangle I, versus a tag is a different is a different monster. Well, and that so. match just got signed earlier today, so we're having a I'm sure we'll learn it out. We'll have, the details, well, let's we'll, let's we'll, that's our homework we'll, for next week. Let's get that let's get that information. Well, and this show's only a few weeks away, so there's there's some other stuff coming up here. I know. Um, I mean, today's the tenth. What are we looking at? A little over two weeks. Just a little over two weeks. Uh, I know Flex, Flex Phenom signed to be there. Wildman Robbie Page is signed to be there. I don't know to what capacity or how those guys are. I, I got to believe they're going to get hands how, on each other how, on some level. How good has Flex been since he's been back? Absolutely. You know, I, I it mean, looks like I, he hadn't missed a beat. I, I, you know, I'm I'm partial to Flex. He's one of my best friends, and you know, I had the privilege of tag teaming with him at this last show as we talked about. And I mean, you know, I we joke around about me in a tag match <laughs> watching the guy take the heat, but you know, I did I really did have a great seat there to watch. Just, just people can't understand ring rust and time off and timing. And I mean, man, he's. I mean, obviously, he's always kept himself in great shape. But what a professional wrestler! So, especially looking at the is. mental part of it, because that, I mean, to have an injury to the extent that he had it, where right. he was, he was virtually a, a, a cough or a sneeze away from being paralyzed. That's that's got to play some mind tricks on you coming back. And then when he came back, he's established himself. As a player, right out of the gate, I mean, and, yeah, and I mean, and he didn't do. There was no warm up matches. I mean, he jumps right in with Robbie Page, and I mean, I, I made my feelings. I won't go into, but in Jason Raditz, you know, I mean, he jumps yeah. right in and gets those guys. And he's not only holding his own, but man, he is competing. He's competing at a high, high level, um, you know. And he's he's just he's smarter, he's stronger, he's faster. He's fucking. Found the fountain of youth, <laughs> and he's, he's refusing to share it. <laughs> but, you know, but yeah, so those those guys, I I don't know what the match is going to be, but I got to believe they're going to be getting hands on each other. Also, T.J. Sykes is signed to be there. Um, the Ace of Spades, Eddie Page, is signed to be there. Um, High Tide Bodie Williams. Is High Tide Bodie Williams. Um, and this is and this is a this is a big night for Bodie. Yeah. This this all all these shows are big, but you know. Uh, it'll be interesting to see after taking the biggest loss of his career, mm-hmm. you know, how he bounces yeah. back from how it. How do you bounce? Yeah, how do you bounce from back it? from it? And you know that I love her, so I don't mean this being rude, but you know, look at somebody like Ronda Rousey. You know, Ronda took that first loss to Holly Holm, and she was just never able to shake it. And then when she finally did get back into the octagon, you know, she just didn't look yeah. like the same. Person. Some, some so people take be, it on the chin and they're never the same again. Yeah, you know? so, and so I mean, I'll be mental as it is physical. You know, I'll be curious to to see because Bodie, he's got a lot of matches under his belt, um, but you know, he's still. I mean, he's not a grizzled old guy like we are. 
You know, I mean, he's still relatively young. And I'll be and curious this, to see how healthy he is because he did get injured he, he in that match. Did he, he didn't and, state that on his social yeah. media. I mean, and there's a lot of guys bouncing around like that now. You know, Robbie Page recently dealing with a, a bicep injury. I mean, there's a bunch of the guys on the elite roster that is dealing with various well, states of injuries. And, and, and I mean, you know, this is it comes with the territory. Does, but when you're talking about being hurt. It's not the same as being injured. And you're right. I mean, I mean, you you and I ran into each other the day after this last show, and I mean, I, I was joking with Jake, but it was a true statement. Like, I can't sleep on my back. I can't fall asleep on my back. But I couldn't lay on my right side because my ribs were killing me. And I couldn't lay on my left side because my shoulder was killing me. You know. So I mean, and that was that was more hurt than injured. You know, I'm not trying to, uh, um, but. But after a few buckets of soda pop at the UFC, you were taking over the dance floor like nobody's business. Well, they play 10th Avenue Freeze Out. <laughs> I mean, what, what the fuck am I supposed to do when they play 10th Avenue Freeze Out? That's funny. I mean, they made the change up town and the big man joined the band. The big man's got to join the band. I mean, the boss has just told us that's what's got to happen. <laughs> See, no, no, no. And that's what a lot of the a lot of the young boys don't understand. They don't until you're in that setting that you're not going to out Leslie Leatherman, Leslie Leatherman, when you get Fun Brian out of the town. I tell you, I tell you. Apparently, there's a legend, the legend of Fun Brian. You know, what I mean, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, just real quickly, if I can go ahead and touch a base on a couple of the other guys that are that are signed to be there. Uh, Travis Tarvin is going to be there. Um, hey, can I tell you real quick? He's one of my favorite guys to watch. I mean, I yeah. just, I mean, he's he is he's a big, big burly. He is kind of a he's sort of a throwback to me. I mean, I just yeah. really, I just think he's a real he's a real throwback. Just one of those toughest nail guys, kind of like like uh, Hercules Hernandez or somebody like that, just kind of not the same style, but just a... Uh, he almost reminds you like a Dick Slater. Or, or Dick Slater, Dick just Slater. a fantastic... That's a what better was the name, analogy. What was the name of the guy? And um, I can't believe I can't remember his name, but uh, his partner actually had passed away uh, a number of years ago, but they were... Uh, they they kind of had that... He had that Dick Slater flavor to him, and he was in WWE. WWE. It was, I'm going to say, five, six years ago. And I want to say his partner that had passed away was trained by Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Oh, oh, I know exactly. You I mean it was uh, Lance Lance Murdoch, Cade Murdoch. Cade, yeah, Cade, Cade, Murdoch, Cade Murdoch. Murdoch. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lance Cade, Trevor Murdoch. Trevor, Trevor Murdoch. Murdoch. Yes. Yeah, he has. A, there's a flavor yes, that's, of that that's too. That's a great. Yeah, he just he really he's you know he's light on his feet. He moves good for a big man. He. He just um, impeccable timing. Yeah, I I'd mean, put, I put his timing in the ring uh, up against just about anybody. Yeah, and, and this is this is, and I'm I'm not just saying this to put myself over, but I've had a couple different people say to me that he reminds me of a young Leatherman. Mm-hmm. Now I take that as a great compliment. It's got to well, be fucking well, we insulting. The, him, but, that's like know, when people but, come up and say, "Oh, you know, I they'll, they'll see." Uh, but you've heard that. Well, before, well, we, too. well, we did did a loop down in Georgia, Wrestle America. There was three, four shows in a row. You know, each night it said Leatherman's son on his envelope. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> when he got paid, it said Leatherman's son. Well, that's like Anthony Ada. He came over and he's like, oh, "You know how many people come up to me when I'm at work or something where I'm out and they think it's going to be you and then it's me?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm really flattered. I'm sure you're appalled." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like talk about your all-time letdown. <laughs> but but I mean I know, I'm sorry, but I just I just think Torben is just I, I think that he is uh, he's one of those guys that um, he's got other things going on in his life well, and he's got his priorities straight. But man, oh man. I'm glad you brought he, that up he because can go he can go and to have the ability to bounce in and out like yes, that. I mean, you, you know, some guys are in the gym, in the ring, training constantly. All this, he's not, and he's still. That's going to be a throwback. He is. He's like that Dick Slater, or you said Trevor, but even like old Dickie Murdoch, like Dick Murdoch, God rest his soul, Captain Redneck. You know, didn't look like a million bucks. But man, oh man, you got him between those ropes, and well, and shit Tarvin, just happened. The thing know? about Tarvin too is he's put on some weight, but it's made him so much more formidable. He's just a monster of a man, he, he, and, he and hasn't lost any hasn't of the athleticism. Oh yeah, and I don't mean that in a negative way. So, yeah, speed, he's gotten you know? just bigger and thicker and yeah, stronger. He, he just you know, but he he is he's one of, he's one of my favorite guys to watch. You know, he's uh, he's one of those he's one of those folks that if he said if he said I'm just going to focus on wrestling. Get the fuck out of his way. I mean, because he yeah. would, he would tear it down. I really believe that. But 
our fans were lucky because I think that the Elite Pro fans are one of the few crops that really get to see him on a regular basis. Yeah. You know I mean, and he's he's a talent, and I'm very glad, and I'm always flattered when somebody says, man, he reminds me of you because I'm like, well, your memory of me is much better than mine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. We also have um, Cisco is going to be there. Um, Cisco was partners uh, with uh, Xavier Cortez, who has uh, parted ways with the company. And uh, so Cisco's going to basically be shooting for a, a singles career. And, I mean, the kid's really, really good. Got an excellent shape. He's in fantastic shape. He works hard. He's got the best attitude, yeah. you know, behind the scenes. But he's got a little chip on his shoulder, too, a little edge. He believes yeah. in himself. I, I kind of uh, I kind of pop for him when I see him because I'm like, is that the razor? He's got the little razor. Yeah, the yeah. You know, and I... Uh, well, you know, and, and, and something just, that's, that's unbeknownst to, to you know, the elite pro universe, so to speak, is that he's he's training pretty consistently in the in the gym, working out, lifting weights with Jason Raddatz, who is in as good a shape as anybody on the roster. So, and you can see it. Like and, you can, if yeah. you look at him last year at this time, and then you look yeah. at him now, he's not it's, the same. He person. has he has gender mahaled himself. I mean, yeah, exactly. He's gender overhauled himself. Overhauled himself. And, and when you look at a lot of those guys, you look at but you know Anthony Adam. You look at a lot of these guys who all of a sudden turned the dial up and yeah. focused on the training, on the diet, on yeah. the yeah. in the ring training and the, the training. I mean. The guys are elevating their games, and everybody else better. Keep they, up. they better, you know. And I just, I, I and I love, I love somebody um, because you know I grew up watching all different eras of wrestling, you know. And but I still like the guys that that embrace a character, whether it's a guy like Anthony Adam that you know, went back and looked up what his heritage is and is embracing that, and Cisco doing the same thing. And I, I just, uh, yeah, you know, I, I really, I think that you know they they bring they bring that. Um, it just adds more to them, other than just going out there and competing. You know, they, they go out there and they they're they're entertaining while they're competing. You well, know? and speaking of entertaining and speaking of characters, uh, what did you guys think of JJ Grizzly coming out of nowhere, making his debut and winning the battle royal in Mount Storm last month? I was really surprised at how big he was when I saw him in person. Yeah, um, he's he's thick. He's wide. Not in a bad way, but he's broad. I mean, from shoulder to shoulder. I mean, he's he's a he's a big dude. And you know? and, and, and uh, he, he, I, I, it wasn't the dumbest thing in the world for him to come out there with Crane. Well, you know, that's true. I, I mean, I mean, Crane, the guy knows what to look for, and of course, Crane well, when sees you look him at coming. The, look at the history of Elite Pro. If Crane's been attached to a guy, the guy's a formidable opponent. He's he's left a wake of damage. You know, yeah. Whether it be you know. The, the Living Nightmare Griffin, whether it be Gangrel, whether it be uh, Sal Sincere, Draconis whether it be, Diablo, whether it be Sinister Man Cross, thing. Yeah, I mean, Man looking thing. through so many people yeah. that, it, that have come down the pike. Well, and, I mean, and the, the truth of it is, too, you know, when you're young and you're inexperienced, having another set of eyes on that match. Because, <clears throat> let's say, for example, you, uh, you and I, you give me a shoulder tackle, and I take, I take a bump. And let's say you twist your knee. I might not even know that you twisted your knee because I'm I'm down on the ground and I right. spin around. Great point. And and you you know you're back on me. You're back on me. Crane could shout. Uh, this is just a hypothesis. Sure. But Crane could immediately be like, get on his knee. He buckled his left knee. Buckled his left ankle. Sure. You stay on that shoulder. And Crane does do the research too, man. You know, and I, you know, I've I've, I've battled against some of his guys before. And I mean, the truth is, is that if a guy's got a weakness, he he sets out a game plan. And he's going to do it. So you take this raw, menacing power of J.J. Grizzly combined with the experience and, uh, and the game plan yeah. and the gamesmanship of Dr. Crane, I don't see why this... I, I look for this guy to be a threat pretty soon. Well, I do know that he's signed to appear at the show in, in just a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, I don't know the details of that, but uh, yeah, he, he's going to be... Uh, on the show, and also, I uh, can't believe we haven't brought it up yet, the Elite Pro Wrestling Alliance Cruiserweight Champion, R.L. Smith. Uh, cape and all, as I understand <laughs> it. Well, yeah, R- R.L. was one of the coolest guys in our locker room. One of the most respectful, coolest guys in our locker room. But boy, he steps through that curtain, and man, it's it's on like a sticking pot of neck bone. I mean, he just goes out there and... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> he did, but I mean, he is—he's he's very athletic. He's another guy that I, I love. These guys that come from the House of Pain. Maybe I'm just biased because you know that—that's our roots. But I think if you go to the House of Pain, one, I know that you're being trained right. Two, I know that you're bumping in rings that are crazy hard to bump in because that's <laughs> and you know and three, you know you're if you're a House of Pain guy, you're coming for a fight. And R.L. Smith can fight, he can wrestle, he's athletic, and he, I'd have to look and see, but he may have won a title in fewer matches than anybody else, save the, the guys that won the belts in the first year or two. You know, because some guys showed up, you know, when we, when we were established sure. champions. Yeah. So that cat's here, but, um, <laughs> you know, um, I was promised that you would not come over here. <laughs> <laughs> cats. Sorry, that was my. But I mean, how, I mean, truthfully, how many matches did he have under his under his belt before he won that cruiserweight championship in Elite Pro? Think about it. Maybe three. Sure. Counting the battle royal. Counting the battle, him his battle royal earn, earn his spot. It's all about taking advantage of the opportunity. Take, and he's in there with who? It was Dalton Hayes and Chris Gatton. Whenever he he took the title, correct? Yes. So, I mean, you know, he's not in there with... And he ultimately defeated uh, Dalton Hayes in the singles match to win it back. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just I, I just think that, you know, you... Also, uh, Chris Catton is scheduled to appear at the show, who uh, I'm a big fan of, and you guys know it, and I won't go over it a million times, but I think he's great. I think he's one of the most legitimate guys uh, on the roster right now, and... Uh, Pound for pound, I think he's probably one of the toughest guys. Yeah. Well, and there's there's something to be said about being a double sport athlete, especially when MMA is the other sport. I mean, no other sport, in my opinion, can you translate into pro wrestling. So when you're successful at both, it's it's forcing you to be better at both. You know, mm-hmm. I th- I think that that pro wrestling translates to MMA very well too, because you're looking at a, a certain level of athleticism that MMA wouldn't have if you weren't in pro wrestling. So I think right. that. that his success in both is because he's doing both. Yeah. I like a guy to walk up and look you in the eye and give you a big, yeah. you know, smack your hand, handshake, you know. And and he, uh, I remember Batista, you know, the old floppy fish is dead, you know, and that's an inside thing, but you guys know what I'm talking about, you know. But uh, um, yeah, he just, you know, he's just he just carries himself like a man, you know. And uh, he's he's another coup for us. He's a guy that he's a guy that. You know, he's just got bigger and better things coming up. You know, uh, the the younger guys that are on the show right now are going to be the guys that are going to be at the top of the poster in a couple of years. Yeah, you I know, agree. And, and Gatton, I, Gatton, I think Gatton and RL, you know, they, those are guys that got the potential to do that. Yeah, and I mean, and hell, RL's got the cruiserweight title right now. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I don't mean that as a knock to him. I don't mean that he's not a player right now, but I don't he see. He just needs to ditch that cape. I love the cape. I hate the cape. I think it's fantastic. I Flex Phenom hates the cape too. <laughs> well, I'm the hey, Flex is my buddy. Doesn't doesn't mean he's right all the time. <laughs> so I mean, somewhere he's posting. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. That cape sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, guys, that show is on Friday, August the 25th at Kaiser High School. And uh, you can get your tickets. Uh, you know, we had a little bit of a delay because of the change and everything, but the tickets will actually be sell- on sale tomorrow right here at Calling All Heroes Comics, 50 Stately Street in Wiley Ford, West Virginia. Or you can call us and reserve them online or reserve them over the phone, 301 697 1909, or go to facebook.com slash elite pro universe or facebook.com slash calling all heroes comics and go ahead and send us a message with what you need and we will hold them for you. You can pick them up at the door. Now, can people pay with a credit card now? They absolutely can. <laughs> <laughs> you can pay with. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Brian. Well, thank you. Wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, wow. We can do. In addition to a Discover, American Express, Visa, and Mastercard, we can also take PayPal. So, but that's not all. That's not all. Order now. I don't know where to go. And we will double your order for just the price of two tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Buy one, get one, retail price. <laughs> But all seriousness, there is there is a little bit of a break of buying the tickets in advance, though. Is is that correct, or am I not correct? About um, that? There is, and that, that's a, a good distinction to make. I'm glad you brought that up today, Brian I, Leatherman, Leslie Leatherman. Um, what that is is that in the past we've had. If you want to call, if you want to call, <laughs> if you want to call and reserve, <laughs> <laughs> he bought <bothered> himself. <laughs> the cheering. 
<laughs> the, uh... <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we lost him. We lost Leatherman. <laughs> oh, I got myself. All right, go ahead. <laughs> State the street. Go. Go. <laughs> 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 uh, felt like a big whopper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, um, what we want you to do, what we're asking you to do, is if you want to get your tickets in advance, please stop in at the store, or uh, you know, you can call in. We can, like I said, do it with a credit card. But to get the uh, advance price, you need to come in and actually get the tickets ahead of time. If you want to call and reserve your seats, uh, what we're doing on these shows is we're reserving the seats as they're, you know, obviously as you guys call, first come, first serve. So the sooner you call up, the sooner you get your tickets, the closer you're going to be. Uh, we do have some front row seats. We have a, a number of sponsors on the show. So there's not as many front row seats available as usual. Uh, but front row seats are $20. Uh, we also have uh, second row uh, floor seats are 15 for adults, 10 for kids. And then uh, bleachers are 13 for adults and 9 for kids. And what's what's the breakdown if they order them prior to? Is that the same? You yeah, you save um, you save, actually save $2 on every seat if you, if you can stop in, pick up your tickets, get them, pay for them in advance. That's awesome. Yeah. It really is. I mean, it's a great deal. You know you got your seats. And... Uh, I and something else worth worth uh, mentioning on this show in particular is at Kaiser High School that gym is so enormous that if you want to be close to the action, I mean a, a first, second, third row is definitely what you want because the bleachers are significantly further away than they are in any other ve- venue that we run. So that's true. We mean, all- you're looking at a building that, that you know, holds anywhere from fifteen to seventeen hundred people as opposed to a smaller venue that we run where you can be a little bit more of an intimate setting being close to the ring if you're in you know the fifth or sixth row. Great point. Uh, the other thing too with this show we actually have room for uh, one more sponsor. So if you're out there and you have a, you have a business or an organization, any kind of a club, anything, anything you want to help promote, uh, Elite Pro Wrestling Alliance is the way to do that. We uh, make sure that you're mentioned, obviously, on the posters, to which there are hundreds of them in a 75-square-mile area. You're mentioned in all of our social media posts and ads, which uh, we spend a fair amount to make sure that that's um, something that reaches uh, tens of thousands of people in the area to make sure that everybody knows about the show. Uh, our newspaper advertising, uh, our radio advertising, uh, you're mentioning all of that. We also... Hell, I'll mention you on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. We, <laughs> you're well, damn right yeah. I will. <laughs> and that also <laughs> puts you in, in uh, qualification for the VIP sponsorship meet and greets, things of that yeah. nature that, that yeah. goes on with the events yeah. as well. And with this show specifically, um, we again, we have room for one more sponsor. We have uh, one more, and I know you're thinking, you know, what, you're going to cough your sponsors. Uh, no, this this last sponsor is going to have the opportunity to get into the ring, an in-ring meet and greet with Abyss, with the former TNA world champion, get a picture, get... Um, uh, uh, get a signed uh, a signed poster as well as a picture with Abyss and also uh, current X Division champion Sanjay Dutt. Uh, both these guys uh, will be available, and this happens about 15 minutes before the doors open. So if you're a sponsor, not only are you getting front row seats, not only are you getting in before the crowd so that you already know where you're at, and uh, not only are you getting able to get in the ring and get your pictures and, and have a personal meet and greet with with uh, Sanjay Dutt and the Abyss, two of the most successful guys in the history of TNA and, and two of the most successful guys in the wrestling scene right now. In addition to all of that, you also have a chance for your business to be uh, advertised and make sure that, that uh, a very targeted demographic is finding out about, about what you have to offer. Yeah, and outside of the sponsorships too, which is a big deal, and I want to thank all of our sponsors that do that because they help everything. It's, it's amazing, but the fans also what makes in, independent wrestling so great, what makes Elite Pro great, is that our fans are going to have an opportunity during intermissions and things to meet Abyss, to get a picture with Abyss, to sure. get an autograph with Abyss, to get a picture with Sanjay Dutt. Um, you know, he, I'm assuming he'll have the X Division title with him. I can't swear to that, but he, you know, but still, I mean, a, along with, and, and these are guys who have already made it, but I'm telling you, our roster are just folks that are about ready to be the biggest thing on there. I, I truly believe, like, Brandon Scott will be at WrestleMania one day. There's no doubt Oh, I, I think that too. You know, yeah. there's no doubt in my mind. And, and I mean, like, wrestling at WrestleMania, you yeah. know. And 
Um, you know, I just, uh, you know, I think Anthony, you know, Bodie Williams, I hate to say Jason Raditz, you know, uh, uh, um, Arl Smith, Arl yeah. Smith, uh, T.J. Sykes, you know Eddie Page, yeah. uh, you know the the roster up and down and all around is just great. And then, you know, to me, people like you know Deuce and Shorty, who I still think like him or not are the finest performers out there. You know, I have a wonderful tag team partner, Tess Valentine, who Tess Valentine is yeah blowing up all over the place. You sure. know, so if you don't think Tess Valentine doesn't have big stuff on the horizons, you're great. I don't think I think she's going to peak at this show. I think tag team with Lester Leatherman will be her, <laughs> her her milestone. But you know, I mean, I'll tell you something else. Uh, somebody else that's on the show that I think is great. And uh, is I, this another Gatton plug? No. Right. If you say the oh. word masterful. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually Chris Gatton. Uh, no. <laughs> Son of a bitch. No. Uh, I'm going to go get Eddie. On the way home. <laughs> hey, Eddie. <laughs> so, um. Fantastic motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, last week when I was talking to Tim Walker, he said, he said, uh, Shane Malice. He said, I think Shane Malice is, is just one of the best hands around right now, and, uh. Uh, he's a big fan. I of agree. I think Shane Malice is. Uh, hey, he's going to carry Dalton Hayes. He's going to have to. <laughs> Somebody's got to. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Tess Valentine, wear a back brace. <laughs> <laughs> you carry this leather one one more time. <laughs> she can borrow mine. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry. Right. Sorry, color commentator. <laughs> 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 All right, well, on that... <laughs> all right, Tate Griffin, all right, so, all right, hit let's... us with a match. Oh, with a match. Any match, whether it be the network, whether it be YouTube, whether it be any other uh, outlet that you can find wrestling matches. Man, what last... you suggest for our fans listening out there. Oh, boy. Uh, man, yeah, it's going to come back to me. i got to think about that for a minute. You always you say that, that, and then you never come back to you. Yeah. All right, you know, I'm, I'm going to just say it. Uh, you know, after Tim Walker talked about me and tag team wrestling basically being synonymous with one another last week, <laughs> I did I did go I did go back on YouTube and find Jake the Machine Davis and Leslie Leatherman versus Robbie Page and Rhino with Kurt Angle as the special force referee, and I got to be honest with you, it's one of my proudest nights ever in wrestling, and and had, watching it again because that was the five year anniversary show, so watching it again three years removed. Um, I think that there's something to be said for how good that match was, yeah. and um, you know we're not WWE guys, you know. So I'll throw out a WWE match I thought was great. It's on the Bret Hart Dungeon DVD if you can find it. Bret Hart versus Andre the Giant, which is just oh wow, it's just yeah. awesome, you know. Um, but selfishly, that that tag match with us, it's um, it's it's one of my. It's one of my ones that you know I'm just I'm real real proud of. So um, that, that's pretty cool. If you want to check something out of us, I would do that. If you want to find something that's just nostalgic and awesome, you know, uh, Bret Hart versus Andre is pretty cool. Hate. Okay, well, uh, not too long ago I was watching WrestleMania five, and the opening match I just enjoyed. I mean, it it wasn't a squash match. It was. It was, I don't know what you'd call it, but I really liked it. It was Mr. Perfect against Owen Hart as the Blue Blazer. Oh, and it was just amazing. just to watch those guys. I mean, and it only went six, seven, or eight minutes, but just everything about it was just so spot on. Yeah. And uh, I just it really was enjoyed perfect? it. I'd say it was absolutely perfect. I would, we're talking about tag team wrestling at WrestleMania 5 as well. Um, the Twin Towers against the Rockers. Oh, the backdrop. Great match. Well, the, else there's a happen? huge backdrop. Uh, I believe he irritated yeah, Akeem yes. with a, with one of the most brutal clotheslines you'll ever see in in wrestling. Period. Yeah. And uh, and I'll throw out the '92 Rumble. Ugh. Well, we've probably said that before. The '92 but... Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> but is that you, the one? When you look at how many, don't ruin it for people that haven't seen it yet. Jackass. <laughs> hey man, we're doing quarter century spoiler we alerts get, here. <laughs> there, there was a, there was a, there was a. Uh, Wait, go, Brian. There was a recent thing floating around on Facebook where, where it was like a list of like your favorite wrestlers, favorite fan favorite, favorite. I saw it. All these, all these other things. Now, 
you really see a difference between the younger guys yeah. and the yeah. older guys. Whenever you're you're going through that list, when you watch the '92 Rumble, you are looking at a match full of champions. Champions. I mean, there out of the 30 guys, I think there's somewhere between 12 and 14 world heavyweight champions in that match. Well, you got I mean, Sid. There's, there's you got Flair. Um, you've got Hogan. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, Flair. That's it. Flair, Sid, <laughs> Hogan. Hogan, Random Order, Hogan, oh, Sergeant, Sergeant Slaughter. Slaughter. I mean, Slaughter. The list just goes, and then you got guys Shawn Michaels. Michaels. Then, then you have guys like the British Bulldog, like Hawkins, yeah. like Rowdy, the Barbarian, Roddy, like Piper, Piper. Ted DiBiase, the Snake. I mean, Roberts. so many guys. And, yeah, Teddy Teddy Max I mean, Saul, Jim Duggan. I mean, it is a who's Undertaker. who of professional wrestling. Period. Not just that era, but period. And then to watch it unfold, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. The best pile driver you'll ever see in any footage of wrestling ever is the one that Haku gives to the British Bulldog. Bulldog. It's yeah. unbelievable. I mean, that match itself has so again. many moments of professional wrestling's history. You say that was within, the 92? Within the hour. You jackass. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was. Uh, it was. It but was, yes, actually, absolutely, absolutely. Watch. But somebody asked me my favorite match. That's my favorite wrestling match. It's my favorite pay per view of all time. Yeah. I'll tell you what I loved about that because I was I was, uh, uh, you know, Piper won the Intercontinental Title earlier that night, and mm-hmm. I just I just didn't ever see them putting a belt on Piper. I don't know why. I just didn't. And um, I think Piper was in fantastic shape at that time. He got yeah. himself in great condition. Yeah. And he had been such a coming and going guy and everything like that. That night. I would say two of my top probably six or seven favorite guys of all time, with Flair being number one and, and Piper being you know right there at that you know that outer limit of six or seven, to see those two guys leave that night with the Intercontinental T- Championship and the World Championship yeah. was amazing. And I'll tell you what was even better was that um, we've talked about this amongst ourselves was a month later, Johnstown War Memorial. Yeah. WWF is there. The main event is a cage match: Intercontinental Champion versus World Champion, Roddy Piper versus Ric Flair. And I'm in like the third row. That's awesome. And I mean, you want to talk about? I think I've seen the picture you have of the two of them on the side of the oh cage. Oh my gosh! It's it's, it's 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 just it's it's just freaking amazing. It's just incredible to to see. Yeah, I never ever would have imagined, and it was a great card. Like DiBiase wrestled the Bulldog that night. Wow. That's yeah, I mean, awesome. just you know, just the the, the matches that I saw. Um, Tito Santana wrestled somebody pretty pretty good too. I can't remember who it was. I think maybe Santana and the model maybe or something like mm-hmm. that. Probably and, somewhere. That's you know, probably that, that it was era right after that. Yeah, because they were they were strike yeah, force. Strike force and, 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 but I mean, it was just it was an amazing card and and just to throw it out too, WrestleMania seven. While we're talking about the Rockers and the Twin Towers, the Rockers probably wrestled. Small man versus big man matches better than anybody. Whether it was demolition, whether it was uh, you know, and, but in that, in that particular one, they wrestle Haku and the Barbarian. And this is the Heenan family, Barbarian and Haku. This right. isn't the Faces of Fear that would be in WCW. Another amazing tag team match. The, the chemistry that the Rockers had with guys that were bigger than them, it was the storytelling is unbelievable. And every one of those, similar to the way Tully and Arnor, but Tully was so much closer to their size. It was a technical masterpiece. Arn was a power guy, but you know when you look at demolition, when you look at the colossal connection, when you look at all these other guys that the, the you know even when the Hart Foundation wrestled, the Rockers, well, and the Anvil was so much bigger, and even Bret Hart was bigger than the two of them. I and, was really surprised. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I was really surprised because I was watching uh, SummerSlam '89 uh, not too long ago, and the opening match is the Hart Foundation against the Brainbusters. Mm-hmm. And the Brainbusters had just won the t- tag titles. There's this great thing with, between because it's a non-title match, and Shivani and Jesse are doing. Tony Shivani was in WWE at the time, and he says to Jesse, he "Goes, well, why aren't the tag titles on the line?" And Jesse goes, "Well, because the Brainbusters won the tag titles after this match was signed." And he goes, "Well, you know, thought if they were fighting champions, he goes, come on, Shivani." But I was amazed at how much thicker. The anvil was an arm because I always kind of looked at those guys as kind yeah. of like in my sort mind, similar, yeah. like mirror yeah. images of each other. I mean, Arn was a much better worker. No disrespect to Jim, the anvil Nighthawk was a much better worker than me. So but, I don't but mean the, like that. Double A is a much double better worker. Double A is double A. I mean, yeah. he's yeah. fucking double A, you know? I mean, when the point you made about the Rockers always having great matches with those big man matches, um, it was one thing, too, when you're talking about the faces of. Well, you know, Haku and Barbarian, those guys are awesome wrestlers anyway. Yeah. And nothing against them, but even when they were wrestling big teams that weren't, I think, 
as technically proficient. And the first team I think of is, uh, and I don't remember what show it was on, but they wrestled the Bolsheviks. Mm. Yeah. And, I mean, it was a great match. And we, we love Nikolai Volkov. Yeah. Uh, it just, you know, everybody has their strengths. And I think for a, a somewhat limited big man team, those guys just yeah, made the, it look amazing. Yeah, those guys were the epitome of, of making people look great and, yeah. uh, and making it look good. I'll tell you another team real quick before we sign off here. Another tag team that's a sleeper tag team, in my opinion, and anybody should go back on the network and look at some of those early, like late 80s, early 90s uh, pay-per-views, the Orient Express. Orient Express. Not yeah. Kato, yeah. but Sato and Tanaka. Yeah. Unbelievable tag team that made everybody Although, look awesome. And also, there's Kato because he, he was, was he was good. He, and, yeah, and, and, and he and was they, uh, they were AW, yeah. Paul Diamond. Yeah, they, yeah, 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 they were, the AWA, yeah. They, they were a great tag team in the AWA, and it's unfortunate that Sato and Tanaka had a nice spin. It's similar to the way Crush came in. He wasn't a bad worker, but compared to Axe well, and, 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 and it, I, it's, it wasn't the same. And, animal, I, and I think they were I mean? a true Asian, right, the true Asian yeah, tag yeah. team and, and everything. But 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 you know, it, it kind of. It, no sequel's better than the original, in my opinion, and and, and that was one of those situations. When they brought Kato in, it was obvious yeah. that you know it what, was time for a change. And, but yeah, they were a great team. Well, and uh, before we close out here, I just wanted to say one more thing. I don't know if you guys saw, but uh, Bill Eady, Demolition, announced that he has retired from in-ring performing. Um, so that happened uh, a couple well, days that's ago. That's an error too, because yeah. I mean, he, you know, he's been wrestling probably. The well, better part of forty years, I guess probably he, more. He turned seventy years old, and he was—he decided it was, uh, I guess, time to hang up. From the article and from everything I'd heard, but that uh, he retired from active competition. And uh, I was—if there was ever a guy that should have a trainer's job somewhere, it's him. And not <laughs> and, just for and, wrestling, and wrestling, for life. Yeah. <laughs> but I—I uh, I had the chance to be on two shows with him, and I got to wrestle him once uh, with uh, Leslie Leatherman here and and, and Jake, and, and uh, I. It was uh, definitely uh, the highlight of my career. I'd always told people, including you guys, if somebody said, oh, you could wrestle you know, with Hulk Hogan or you could wrestle with Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels or you could wrestle Demolition, it would be them. Well, you know, everybody's got their guy, and uh, Bill Eadie's on the short list of my guys. I mean, I've always seen you know, Demolition is, um, I think I told you guys before, you know, Arn and Tully, Demolition and the Blondes are, you know, right there on my short list of my favorite tag teams of all time. And um, so, I mean, I just think that... Uh, hi, Belinda! Jesus! Belinda's here, everybody! <laughs> Leatherman's always talking. <laughs> uh, we are Brody! Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you know, but I, I mean, I love those guys. And, and truthfully, he was... Uh, He's such a great dude. I mean, he's such a great, awesome guy. Been trying to sign off for like 10 minutes, man. All right. <laughs> yeah. And we can talk more about that next week. I, that should be the homework. So let's go back and look for a Billy E match, Mass Superstar, Demolition, what, whatever. We try to find something on the network and maybe bring something to the table. Jake Bullet. Jake Bullet, yeah. We're going to rip up Come Jake Bullet, brother. Let's go, Charlie. We're going to uh, rip Jake Bullet up, man. All right, guys. Well, uh,. We're going to go ahead and sign off for this week. We uh, very much appreciate it, and we will see you guys next week. Uh, we may have a guest. Send your questions in to the Elite Pro Wrestling Alliance Facebook page, and we will try to answer them. Yeah, right and, here. And somebody sent me that, uh, that, that Facebook thing, because I didn't get it from there. The music's playing. We have to die down. You know what I mean? So, okay. Uh, yeah. I think everybody just thinks I'm going to fly for All right, we're going to hit the music again. All right, I'm Tate Griffin. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm the talent. Let's Bert. Let's go. <laughs> uh, bless the other man. Mediator, Jake the Machine Davis. We will, s- relief. <laughs> we will see you next week. Thank you. Ow! <laughs>